I'm Sean Hendricks, uh, and I'm here with Ferran Dominic, who's from MPC, He's the animation supervisor on Godzilla. Yep. And we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the work you guys did on Godzilla and the uh, all the terrors and, and difficulties and ultimate rewards the of the process. And all the rewards. Uh, but I guess first, let's just get an idea of kind of how you got into the industry and where you come from. I'm from Barcelona. I started in the industry about 14 years ago. Um, I studied visual effects. I started uh, working in London. I joined MPC about 12 years ago, and I've been an animation supervisor for 10 years now. Um, I recently moved to Vancouver and uh, for like the last year and a half, and I supervised Godzilla. Now, I, I heard, heard as well in our earlier conversation, you've worked on a number of the Harry Potter films in this process. I've worked in six of them, since Harry Potter 3 all the way to the last one, Harry Potter 8. So basically your life has been Harry Potter for a decade? It's for a decade, Harry Potter, and then I did Prometheus and The Lone Ranger, um, Total Recall. Um, that's pretty much it, and then I, I came to... Uh, Vancouver and did uh, Godzilla. So I think it's fairly safe to say you broke the mold out of Harry Potter after that. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm not typecasted on that. Magical, all sci-fi all the time not, after that. doesn't have to be magical <laughs> beings all the time. I can do monsters as well. So I guess one of the first uh, things that comes up when you talk about uh, something like Godzilla, which is obviously a very iconic, uh, people have been watching it for decades yep. in one form or another, whether it's the foam suit or something in CG. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, really the last one wasn't that long ago, so people remember it fairly well, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, so what were the things you guys were first worried about when you took on that movie? Well, um, we obviously were going to be very um, true to the original. We wanted to be paying homage to the original. It had to be biped, it had to be is instantly recognizable as Godzilla. At the same time, the way Garth explained it to us is like, well, if Godzilla really happened, how would be that creature? How, how, we, how would it would be? And then the way he imagined this, the 1954 um, Godzilla was like fishermen seeing the, the real thing and going, to, going home and telling about a monster they found out and then they recreated it in, in whatever style right. they could. So it was based on something. So basically our creature has to, re to be like, okay, if you find it, it's like you understand how they could get to that suit monster that they did in the 50s because that's, uh, that's like, the, like the real thing versus... You can see the parts like, that made yeah, it up. They, were, they just basically described it and they did the, the best they could. And this way, we, I think we, they reached... Well, he did a very good job of, of taking what makes Godzilla Godzilla and, and bringing it to the 21st century. So now once you uh, get the project in and it's like, okay, we've got to figure out what to do. What's the first thing you guys spent your time doing working on this? Well, we had to figure out how it works, um, what the roar looks like. <laughs> Um, the iconic roar, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's so big, so huge. Just how fast would it move? Um, if it's going around through a, through a city and he's 350 feet tall, how fast shall it move? So we did a lot of testing on that. And it's basically a learning process for everyone. And you get to, to learn a lot of things by observing large animals like elephants. Um, and other things you just have to try. We recorded ourselves in slow motion. We um, acted it out. We had descriptions from Gareth of like, well, it has to be like a samurai. It's like... He's got an attitude, he knows he's big and powerful, he's got like a persona. Sometimes he was a bit like, um, like a, like a um, doorman on a, on a club, like someone who's right. really... The bouncer waiting for him. Yeah, the, he, he knows he's big and he can take it and he has that, that kind of calm demeanor of someone who's confident on his own strength. Um, and then, you know, we really had to put a lot of work on every movement, had to have follow through. Nothing could have like sudden accelerations. There were no changes of direction that would take less than like half a second, because it's so big, all that mass has to go somewhere, right. and, and that's how you sell the, the weight. And in the animation department, we also put a lot of effort on making the animation dailies, which are usually quite plain, usually gray, with not much fancy stuff, to actually um, uh, use as much as we could all the lights and using setups with uh, animated cars of smoke to make it look as much as possible as a computer game, so, or like as a final render, but uh, on real time just to get as much of the uh, essence of what the shot would be. Because, you know, you're going you're gonna to have a big creature. Every time he steps, he's going to make a big explosion of, of smoke and dust on his step, and then he'll hit a building. If you don't put all those effects in the animation pass, it's very hard for ourselves and the client to know, well, is this going to be cool or not? Does yeah. it really create as a big giant? Yeah. So it becomes like the entire shot becomes like uh, not only the animation of the character per se, but like the construction of the entire shot right. all the way to the lighting and the effects. So it's and not like in a lot of films where like the character animators can kind of be in their own little bubble for yeah. a large chunk of what they do and it's like handoff. 
Yes, uh, in this case we had to make it look uh, a lot more like the Pulse like really detailed and nice with all the effects. So everyone was confident when watching in the edit, okay, if you take this into photo real quality in the end, it's going to be awesome. So how much back and forth did you guys end up having to do with like the VFX side when you because I, I can imagine you getting the animation what you think is perfect even when you've tested everything out yeah. and then VFX goes, well... <laughs> I know, uh, we had that sometimes where we would animate perhaps a bit too fast or some leg that you cannot see is doing something, hitting a building out of frame, but that affects the building. Right. So we would just kind of have to do these animation dailies where we just show the animation from a third, uh, third perspective out of camera and then go back to the animator and say, oh, okay, you have to fix the feet. I know they're not in frame, but they're affecting this and that later on the chain. So we had to be extra careful. Or monsters were really going through dynamically destroyable cities and, right. and they, things that you could that you, couldn't, stuff. <laughs> you could destroy things that they were out of frame that would actually fall apart in frame. So yeah. you had to be careful. Not to mention the extra calculation time, though, then. Extra it. calculation <laughs> time. A, a tail flicking really fast because nobody cares because it's out of frame. Well, suddenly they care because it's like making a mess. So you have to be careful and be more thorough and clean in the way you work. It's really kind of an odd problem to have come up and you're destroying too much stuff. It's yeah, not, not. yes. Well, it is a problem. <laughs> it takes a lot of calculation. So we want to break only the things that we actually need to break. Exactly. So now, movies out, everyone's seen it. What, what are the, the things you're most proud of in, in completing Godzilla. What about the character motion or whatever that you look at and go, yeah, we nailed that? I, I am very proud of the entire third act. It's, it's all amazing. And I think it looks really good. It, it feels heavy. The, the fights are really um, animalistic and cool at the same time. And obviously, I, I just go around forums and I read about like the opinions of people because it's the internet age, right? And, yep. and absolutely everyone loved the quality of the effects. If anything, there was this thing like, oh, we could have more Godzilla. So that's, that's definitely yeah, I a heard compliment. That many times. Yeah. I, I, I went to see it with my six-year-old son. Yeah. And a lot of, um, people are judging me as I say this. <laughs> you went to see it with a six-year-old? Yeah. But he loves these kind of movies. And, of and that, was, that was his only complaint about Godzilla. He's like, when's Godzilla going to show up? You know? Yeah. <laughs> it took a while to build up, but I liked it. Yeah. It had that Jurassic Park kind of slow build up. Slow and it, 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 I think it was, I it was well done. It's just it left people with enough like, oh, that was awesome. I want, I want some more. Well, then we'll get the sequel. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for coming out for the interview. My pleasure. Talk to everyone later. We'll have more videos coming out throughout the week. Thank you.